Hi friends, it's Art with Emily time. It's good to be here with you today and I'm looking forward to next week when we'll have live art and I'll see you through the screen. That'll be great. For today, I think we'll start with a picture book. It's called Yayoi Kusama. It's about an artist, a real artist. It's a nonfiction picture book. And I'm thinking that some of the times during this period of time where we're having um, distant schooling, I think we'll look and invest, look into and invest, investigate artists from around the world, different, various artists in our country, people um, from different ethnicities and races, cultures, people from our country, people from different countries, and just think about their impact on the world of art and how they made a difference. I thought that would be a really cool kind of study to do as we also make artwork ourselves. It might be cool to think about how other people make art or have made art in the past. So this book is called Yayoi Kusama and it's from, from Here to Infinity and it's by Sarah Suzuki, illustrated by Ellen Weinstein. And I'm noticing that you have to excuse the shadows that my window is making. Those lines here, that's from my window. But um, here you can notice that there are polka dots. I wonder if I can make those lines go away. There. You can see some polka dots on the end pages. Yayoi Kusama was born in the country of Japan on the island of Honshu in a town called Matsumoto City. An old palace made of wood and stone overlooked a moat where swans swam, the streets were lined with little shops, and snow-capped mountains rose in the distance, swallowing up the sun as it went down in the evening. Yayoi's family owned nurseries where all kinds of flowers and vegetables grew, and workers tended the plants as they matured from seeds to sprouts to stalks. But Yayoi yearned for a different life, far from the countryside. She dreamed about what lay beyond the mountains in places far from Matsumoto City. She longed to leave home and see the world. Yayoi's mother wanted her to stay home and learn old-fashioned manners, how to dress elegantly, walk demurely, eat politely, and find a proper husband. But Yayoi wanted to be an artist. Every day she went outside with ink and brushes and paper. She drew things she saw and things she imagined. She looked closely at the pebbles that lined the riverbed and at the leaves and stalks of plants, and she drew them as chains of tiny cells that looked like dots. Can you see her drawing? So she's fascinated by stones and she turns them into these dots, and that reminds me of the polka dots we're seeing on the end pages. When she was 28 years old, she packed up her silk kimonos and thousands of drawings and stuffed dollar bills into the toes of her shoes. It was her first airplane ride. There were only four other passengers and the weather was stormy with rain and lightning. The airplane wobbled and dipped as it flew to America. In New York, Yayoi went to the top of the Empire State Building, the tallest building in a city full of tall buildings. When she looked down, she saw buses and cars and yellow taxis zooming up and down the avenues and bankers and teachers and artists rushing to work. From up on the 86th floor, they looked like dots. Mm -hmm. 
Interesting. All those cars look like dots to her. She felt very far from quiet Matsumoto City and her mother's rules. Here, it seemed anything was possible. Yayoi set about turning her drawings of dots and paintings, about turning her drawings of dots into paintings. The dollar bills that she had brought to America quickly ran out and she spent what little money she had left on paints and canvases. She worked day and night. She painted when she was cold. She painted when she was hungry. She painted when she was lonely and she turned her dots into sculptures. Into, she also turned them into stuffed tubes that covered sofas, chairs, and boats. Look at that. She was devoted to her dots. For her, they were a way of thinking about the world among the stars. As one dot among the millions of others, they were a way of thinking about infinity. And we know that infinity means never ending just on and on and on, and she's seeing dot, these dots are just endless, right? Her paintings seemed so different from those she had seen at museums. When she was at last ready to show her work in public, she invited all of her friends she had made in New York. When she arrived at a gallery, a crowd was spilling out onto the sidewalk. Her friends lifted her into the air, shouting, Yayoi! You finally done it. Word about her artwork spread quickly. Her friends told their friends, newspapers wrote about her work and reporters clamored to interview her about her dots. Now she began to show them in other cities all over the United States and all over Europe. Trying to get away from the sunshine, the late afternoon sun. Her dots were covering the world. They appeared in Venice in thousands of dot-shaped mirrors scattered over a big green lawn, on a pumpkin on a pier. on dresses and t-shirts, on people walking down the street, and in mirrored rooms where glowing dots were reflected and reflected again, an infinity of dots. This may, I don't, this, I love her work. I just think that dots are so cool, the way she can use them in so many different forms and ways and still have her, her kind of message and her feeling about them come through. Look at this page. Isn't that beautiful? I'll show you a close up. <laughs> Having visited many countries all over the world, Yayoi returned to Japan. The country had changed since she left, with many different artists challenging the old traditional style as Yayoi had been doing all along. She still lives in Japan and she continues to paint her dots every day. This reminds me of what she was painting when she was little. Should we look back at that page? Just curious to see. Doesn't that remind you of little Yayoi? There she is as an adult, turning those memories into her artwork. Think about it. The kind of artwork you're making now, that can turn into your artwork and your way of thinking about things or your way of being creative later in life. Isn't that cool to think about? 
artwork by Yayoi Kusama. The infinity mirrored room, the souls of millions of light years away, 2013. So that's an installment that she did. Isn't that so powerful and beautiful? Could you imagine seeing that in person? The obliteration room, 2002 to present. So this is still happening. This is an art artwork in progress like it's she still adds to it how cool is that and i wonder if maybe people add to it i think maybe it might be like a um i think i've read about this one i think this is where people in the exhibit like when you're there if you're seeing the art exhibit you can add a dot wouldn't that be cool to be like a part of a living art exhibit. The end and here she is. How cool is she? Anyway, I really like her work and I wanted to share this with you. If you have any questions about her, if you are interested in knowing more, let me know and I'm happy to share anything I know. We can also research together. For now, I'm going to send you off. Well, not, not going to send you off. I'm going to have you watch the rest of the video, which shows you about our project that we're going to do this week. We're going to make nature faces. So we're going to kind of put our artist's eyes on, look outside with, you know, make sure you check in with, with your family and loved ones or caretakers at home to make sure it's okay to, to, to you know, to go out and explore. Check that outside and see, look at the world in terms of like finding art materials. So like, this isn't just a stone, this is an art material, right? So this isn't just a piece of bark, I'm gonna use this, right? So collect all of your art materials, as if you're in like the art room and I say, you can go get your wood pieces or your, you know, oil pastels or whatever you need for today. And you would go and you'd pick all your stuff out. Well, right now, you're, you're, the yard outside your house or the woods or the sidewalk, or any little patch of nature you can find in a park, that's your source of art material. So I want you to collect things like pine cones and leaves and stones and flowers and dried seed pods, pine needles, moss, I'm just giving you some ideas, um, long grasses, um, seeds, little seeds from plants, anything. Anything you can think of, and the more interesting, the the better, the you know, the more useful it will be as you make these faces. And what you're going to do is you're going to find a flat piece of earth or driveway or sidewalk outside, and you're going to create faces using your art material. So if you keep watching, you'll see some examples of some, my faces and my some of my my children helped me out a little bit to make some faces, and I'm going to show you some examples of other people, other artists who have made nature faces and I'm going to ask if you wouldn't mind sharing your nature faces with me I'd love to see what you make and um, I also urge you to check out the Swift River School website that I'm putting in your Google Classroom last week I think there was a little bit glitchy and was hard to get in that I think was not on your end I think that was on my end and so I fixed it and it should be okay you should be able to click through Danica let me know that some of you had a hard time and it wasn't your fault it was totally like my fault and the computer the computer's fault but now it should be usable you should be able to click through so click through and also explore and notice that in my website, I have a student art gallery. So if you send me your nature faces from this week, I can post them. If you say it's okay, I can post them in the art gallery. I think I'll leave it. If you don't want it posted, you can let me know. Otherwise, I'll take it that I can post it. Okay, is that a good deal? So if you do not want it posted, let me know. 
Otherwise, we can all kind of check out what we're all making because, you know, usually in school, we can look in the hallways and see what our friends and classmates and community are making. But now we have to do it a different way. So that's how we're going to do it. So check out the website. Continue watching so you can see how to make a nature face. Share with me. Um, check in with, you know, the Google Classroom art section for art this week and see what other things I've asked you to do. And always reach out and say hi if you want to. I always love hearing from you. Bye, friends.